Yeah. Yeah. Kind of makes you think about what, what the true market cap for GameStop actually already is. If we own right. half, exactly. half, a billion, half a billion or a billion shares, then the market, the market cap of GameStop's really already approaching $30 billion, right? Not eight. I mean, that's the, that's the number one question I have is literally how many are out there? You know what I mean? Because theoretically, this could go you know, astronomical, 20 million plus, like in theory. But in reality, it's like, what matters is how many shares are out there and how many people are going to hold. And like the price will go up reflective to the hold or in any crazy like interventions. But, but it's like, oh man, it's just, (laughs) it's crazy to me to think to myself, how many people are actually holding this and like, what's actually going to happen. It's like, that's two big things you mentioned that aren't in that chart that I showed earlier, right? Is that chart kind of captures potential market cap and kind of conditions, but it doesn't capture how many shares have been sold and then people's willingness to hold, right? right. So it's really the combination of the four that determines how big it could go, as well as available liquidity of funds in the system, right? To, you know, like how much could actually get, but they have to buy it. When they have to buy, they have to buy it. So, yeah. Um, it's it's an interesting scenario. I was going to mention that that's been my burning question too ever since the Google survey, right? Because the Google survey basically showed back last year in 2021, you had small com- small countries like Sweden or fin- uh, Finland that had this crazy ownership, right? And when the German brokers kind of said how many shares were owned during the stock dividend split, it was crazy how many shares were owned by just Germany or just Canada, right? Or just Australia. So I've always wanted to know, since we can't have a truly accurate representation of short interest, because it could be hid in so many ways. Right. And these are all, they're not conspiracy theories, too. It's all been revealed through Archegos and, and these other explosions that it's all true, right? Yeah. The swaps of the derivatives. So everything that we've been told is like tinfoil hat is totally legit. So to me, it's like, well, what's the real number then? And the only way to get to the real number is to have disclosure of positions, which kind of tells me at the beginning, why did not they not want us at Wall Street Bets and elsewhere to disclose positions? Exactly. I think that the best thing we could do is tell people, right. hey, I own X number of shares. So other people could say, holy smokes, if, hey, if he owns that many shares, they own that many shares and you just add them all up. Like yeah. you said, yeah. there's a huge problem here. Yeah. But- so we're going to do, um, just so you know, we're going to do a third survey uh, I, I've been speaking with some people, they've approved it through the mods on super stock. So we're going to get a big call to go out on Wednesday. So after the earnings call on okay. Wednesday, the survey is going to drop Okay, and we're going to try to answer that question. How many shares God, I you love know, it. exist? On this? I love it. So Let's do it. I, I was going to ask you, I didn't get the chance to ask you before this, but hopefully you can hype the survey too, yes. get people to fill it out. Oh, it won't be a Google out. survey. Yeah. We're getting, um, it's a it's a different survey Hell provider yeah, that dude. way. I'm glad we're doing this. Yeah, that way people's personal information won't be because people are yeah um, rightfully wary of uh, signing up on like a Google survey. So it's not going to be a Google survey this time. This is exactly but, why we're going to win because we're like just normal people who are like I'm going to put together a survey and let's just figure this out together. And everyone's like, you know, I don't want your personal information or anything. Like you can clearly see that this is like a legitimate survey <laughs> already. It's like. We're not trying yeah, to take your like, information you know, like, and sneak just like get a database of who, who is yeah. investing. Like we can see that this is just normal people that are trying to figure this out and we will get crazy numbers like we always do. We're like, whoa, whoa it looks like we're right. <laughs> yeah. So similar to the last two surveys, it'll be real simple too. Like how many shares do you own that are DRS? Wild. How many shares do you own that aren't DRS? Are you US or international? And then the third one we wanted to, to learn about, I forget what it was. It was a really good survey question too. Oh, how many, how many accounts do you have with computer shared uh, computer share? Because you know how sometimes people get multiple accounts? Yeah. That's really important because you know it, it messes up the model on computershare.net. Mm-hmm. So we want to get a sense if we get a big enough survey, um, you know, is it like an average of one account or you know, 1.1 or 1.2? So we can account for that to a degree. Because that that with only two inputs on that model on that website, it'd be nice to know that how many how many accounts people have. I loved statistics when I took it and I got an A in it, but I can't remember much of it. But give me a give me like a, a range of people that okay, need to, like best case scenario took the survey. Cause I would imagine like a sample of 10 doesn't necessarily reflect the whole like that are out there, but we have a sample size of let's say like 
so many that it almost represents everybody. We could get a true like understanding of what's at, what are they actually doing, you know, like, but with our little community, like we might only get like a thousand or 2000 people. I don't know the numbers would get like on from the Reddit, you know, but whatever that number would be, like, what's the best number to then extrapolate that to the whole, I guess is a question. Still there. I lost you for a second. No, My internet's <laughs> no. I said that I said I explained this question so perfectly. God dang it. I, I know you did too. I know. You're gonna have to ask it again. Dang it. Okay. <laughs> My internet is so bad tonight. I don't know why. Sorry. I said, okay, I said, what's the best number of a sample size that like for that what's yeah. the goal for a survey to be like, okay, this is enough of the whole to say that it can represent the whole the actual whole like if we were to extrapolate this out with some standard deviations of people might be bsing us or some people might be exaggerating yeah so when i taught stats because i actually taught ap stats for a number of years um <laughs> you know they this the formulas give you this idea that you don't need that big of a sample size i'm not convinced of that however um in this case i could say just um anecdotally having watched like here let me tab over to it again so just so you can see what i'm talking about because i was always like worried about that i was like there's no way that you could sample 30 people and get something accurate right that just seems like too small yeah they try to say that that's the case though so um what what i kind of did with the first survey was i kept like this log down here at the bottom so you could see can you God, I love, this. Can see. love this yes so when we started the survey, we had a sample size of 700 people initially, and the proportion of shares DRS was coming in at 40%. Yeah. And then you can see it change over time. So as we got up to like 776 people, um, it dipped down a little bit to 0.38. So 38% of shares were DRS. And then, you know, over the course of about a month, the sample size doubled, but we stayed at 0 0.4. You know, wow. So 40% of shares being DRS. So I'm not sure what the correct sample size you need is, but it seems like 700 to 1400 was fairly consistent in the outcomes. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's somewhere smaller than 700, but that's, you crazy. know, the idea is it seems really, yeah. really low, but like, I'm, I'm glad because I wanted to, I wanted to represent the most accurate or at least an accurate look at the whole, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's good to know. Hopefully Dude, I, I pop up again on the screen. Let me oh, see. yeah, yeah. Oh, I got you. I think I click. There we go. There we go. Yeah, you so, are. you know, as a former stats teacher, I always felt that the they were, a, the statist statisticians are a bit optimistic, right? Because there's tons of things that could go wrong in your survey, not necessarily even due to bias, but just due to random chance, right? You could get a whole bunch of people responding that don't have a lot of shares DRS or do, and then you could get a proportion that's way off of reality, right? So more is better in my mind. And that's why I'm hoping with this with this end of year survey and some hype, we could maybe see, I don't know, m many thousands of people respond. And I think that that would be really cool. That would be cool. I think that's like one thing that the community needs to hear. Like if I if this was a clip, it's like, hey, shut up about the whatever you want to talk about on Superstunk or whatever you think about me or Richard or it, your friend or posting on Reddit. Let's all do this survey and let's see... <laughs> the best accurate count we can get about what's out there before we, without DRSing, without thinking about, let's just do the survey and see what the sample size is we get. And then let's see, it's going to be a fun experiment. Like we should just all do it. <laughs> right. Why I would we not? For, yeah. Right. And what's important for people to know is it's not about, cause people will say something. I totally get this. If, if you just hear it at a glance, you're like, well, why would we do this? We already know how many shares are DRS, right? 92 million. Right. But it's, not about knowing the number of shares DRS, it's about that mystery number. Exactly. How many are how many aren't DRS? And if you yes. know the percentage of shares DRS, if it's a third, then all we got to do is multiply by three. If it's a fourth, then we're multiplying by four. If it's only like a fifth, then we're multiplying by five. And that's crazy. That means that this thing is oversold that is to crazy. the tune of hundreds of millions of shares, right? Like, yeah. I and I think that's gonna be the case. If we can if everyone would just come together and be like, oh yeah, like I am holding shares. Let me just do this vote, you know, this survey, like if we, if somehow it could get promoted across the entire internet where it's like an ad where everyone yeah. that had GameStop could do this survey and somehow it like got the most retention ever, you know, then we could get like the most accurate count. But like, I think that, I think that's what the, uh, uh, the Google survey, the Google survey last year was kind of like that because really? Google surveys 
pay them money. Yeah. And it'll go out anonymously and randomly to various people. So there were a lot of people that didn't own any GameStop at all, right? It was just asking them, have you ever owned GameStop? If so, do you still own it? And if so, do you, how many shares do you have? So they hit mostly people that had not owned games, GameStop and then extrapolated that way. So totally different methodology there. The survey we're conducting by nature is always going to be biased towards people that are big owners because they're super stonkers probably, or people following YouTube channels like yours or mine, um, and DRSers because again, super stonkers are people following these uh, small YouTube channels. So, but that's that's even better because that means that whatever number we predict will be conservative. Right, right? exactly. The, the true number will always be higher, right? Yeah. Which is going to terrify whoever's on the other side. They're going to be like, oh my goodness. It has to like, be way higher than that because like, yeah. we are literally like, uh, it, it sounds bad or good, whatever way you want to take it. We are like a little cult following we have over yeah. here where it's like diehard people that will not sell are buying and holding and DRSing. It's like a, the most awesome cult ever. <laughs> it really is. Like, and it's, it's funny so awesome. because I've, I've talked about that too. Like cult has this totally negative connotation, right? But if it's a small stock, a cult is insanely powerful. And but this cult, like people are always arguing. You go into like almost yes. any thread on Superstock, people are constantly ar yes. arguing. Like right now, plan versus book. Or, oh my god, um, it's so annoying. Yes, right. Or whether or not the stock is going to run next week, it is. By the way, but um, you know, like so, everyone's <laughs> technical analysis. No one wants to hear it, but everyone wants to see it, right? Yeah, uh, that's true. So the community is constantly. Um, arguing and squabbling. And then it's like the community is constantly giving. Most cults take from their members, right? But this cult, everyone's constantly giving to other people. That's true. Um, so it's like a reverse cult. I don't know. It's hilarious yes, to me. It is. That's why, like, when you have a high level look at it like this, like you and I do, I knew we'd see eye to eye on this. It's like crazy, man. It's crazy to see it actually playing out and be like, okay, you want as an investor to have a cult like following on your yep. stock you want it's a positive bullish thing to find a, every, a diamond every, in a rough yeah every board of directors of every company is like looking at the gamestop brand and being like how do we get that because that is incredibly valuable yes yes and they can't yeah. they can't do it yeah. there's just no way i mean they can it probably just, fake it like they tried to fake it with amc that's exactly <laughs> what i think amc was in my opinion i thought it was a fake out i thought it was like them trying to create a version of GameStop to the to the to everybody that isn't that like something that and just just for the sake of holding on more money, but uh, who knows? I don't know. <laughs> on the AMC angle, like because I I never want to put people down for their investments, right? I think that's number one. Like I'm always open minded. Like I'll ask people, like, oh, why'd you invest in X or Y or Z, right? But for me, the biggest thing about AMC that was a red herring was this will sound weird, but Google or uh, Reddit slash place. Right where we were, we were yeah. putting those pixels down, and you saw what got built by the GameStop community right there in the middle, and the respect it got, and it like no one wanted to mess with that, right? And AMC yeah. just struggled to do anything. <laughs> so that was like, so funny. That's such a funny thing to, that you brought up because that's so true. That's such a great representation of this whole story. <laughs> All I needed to know was I was like, the GameStop <laughs> community is real. It's legit. Like yeah. these are people that are in the trenches and I worry about what's going on with AMC because it's very possible given what we've seen in the media for them to construct a fake out play. Right. Yes. And so I'm not saying they did, but to me, that was the big like sign. However, with AMC, not to make this about AMC, the fact that it went on rake show last year in the middle of the summer and ran up to $72. It's interesting. And, it, and it's cost to borrow right now is ultra high. I would say um, that same thing. Like, okay, I, I crap on AMC people a lot just because I think it's funny, but because it is like an obvious fake out to me, but, and, and, and I just think Adam Aaron is just horrible. <laughs> I think he's the worst, but other than what that, they did with the, uh, what they did with the ape coin or the ape uh, <laughs> stock, and then now they're using it to, to yes. continue to dilute. Dude, like very crazy thing. they all are selling their stock and then saying it's good and it's like no one cares it's like dude if ryan cohen like crapped all over us and they kept trying to shill us other coins it's like i'd be out <laughs> okay but it, that is not the same story as what we have and it's just it's crazy to me but you know i do see all the all jokes aside and reality aside i see gme amc bed bath and beyond you see the meme stock basket i still to this day 
even though I don't believe, I only believe there's one Moaz, which is GME. I do think there are a lot of other heavily shorted companies. I think we've gotten lost in the joking in the communities, but like these all are really short because we have to go back to everything's being lent out. So it's the everything short right now. So when they overly, and these are, this is the biggest basket right here, these meme stocks, right? And they're so heavily short that, that when across the board, one pops, the other one pops up too, because it's just chaos ensues. And I have and to I ask myself, why, why has this happened? I think that's what makes it so hard to predict too, because they're all running on their own cycles. Like BBBY is on like a cycle that's about twice as long in duration as GameStop, it seems like. So they sympathy rally, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's whatever these swap or other derivatives, ETFs and, and so forth being used. And it's so it's apparent, but it's super hard to predict because it's like, well, can they just push one a little bit further because they know the other one is coming due in three weeks and then let it run? And it throws off all the timing and stuff. So I think it makes it really hard. And that's why I would caution anyone. Like, I don't care if it, anyone plays options or does whatever. It's just like, you just never know what they can do. They might just hold it like they're doing with, with GameStop right now. And my opinion, honestly, is they're going to let GameStop and BBBY run during BBBY's next cycle. Because I think the pressure on BBBY right now is insane. But I agree. GameStop, GameStop's got this latent, in, like insane position. <laughs> and BBBY's got this like surface level position yes. that's like, Six months um do yeah so it's that's kind of what i'm seeing observationally out of it. they could just kick the whole thing another six months it seems like if they want to but it's drs true. is the thing that's not true on any of the other ones no right. other stock is being drs'd yeah. so to me that's what keeps me in the gamestop play is the community just seems the most real yes uh, most, most authentic yep and the, D and the drs is is pushing up against um a clock of a market crash the pending doom okay. Because their collateral is dying everywhere and somebody's going under Lehman Brothers style, we're going to see somebody implode. And what is that? What effect is that going to have? Because we think that when that happens, they're going to get obliterated. Their shorts have to be closed and then it's a chain reaction. Like it should be a chain reaction because it pushes the price up to the threshold where people get margin called. And it's just like, you can't afford this number now. We know. You know we know you can't afford eight. And we need money, by the way, because it's a market crash. So the lender needs money. So they have to margin call the person that owes them money. And it's gonna be utter chaos. And I can't wait. I literally can't wait. <laughs>